In this video, I'm going to do a full review on the Netgear GTV100. So let's get to it. So this is Netgear's foray into the world of Google TV. And this is actually the fourth Google TV device that I've ever owned and reviewed on this channel here. In one of my more popular videos, I compared the Logitech review with Google TV to the Roku 2 at the time. And in my opinion, at that time, the Logitech review just edged out the Roku device. But since then, times have changed, and Google TV really hasn't changed much. Now, this device has been on the market for probably maybe just a little under a year now. And I've had it. I've had it in my bedroom. I've used it as my primary streamer up there. And right now, I'm actually reviewing it on my Insignia television set. For those of you who follow my channel, that's not the TV in my bedroom. Now, if you're familiar with Google TV, you'll notice that this is not the traditional Google TV interface. This is actually a proprietary interface. The good thing about it, though, unlike most skins for Android, you can actually switch back to the stock. I think my cat knocked something over there. You can actually switch back to the stock Google TV interface. I, it just so happens that I prefer this interface. Normally, I don't like skins, but um, I do prefer it on this. It's actually almost a Windows 8 style appearance here. And it allows you to pin all your favorite apps where you want them. So before we get into the device itself and the user interface, I want to start off with the remote. So here's the remote here. It's a typical Google TV style remote. And what I mean by that is that it has a lot of buttons on it. And the last Google TV device that I owned was the Vizio CoStar. Before that, it was the Logitech Review with Google TV, and then the Sony Streamer was the first Google TV on the market. The Sony Streamer had a remote that looked like a embellished PS3 remote. The Logitech Review had a full keyboard for its remote, and then the Vizio CoStar had a very thick remote, kind of similar to this, except this is a lot thinner than the Vizio CoStar remote. But it had your directional, let's see if we can initiate it here. Um, okay, for some reason, there we go, it's working now. Okay. Um, there's an arrow, and I'm trying to initiate it there. There we go. So you have your arrow here where you can use your pointer, and that actually comes in handy when you go to Google Chrome. So let's go to Google Chrome here. There we go. So you actually have a full Chrome web browser here. Unfortunately, it does not support Flash. So you cannot use HBO Go. In the beginning, Google TV devices did support Flash, but with the latest update, it does not anymore. So you have your web browser here, you have your URL bar, and that's where the other side of this remote comes in handy. Now the keys on this remote work very well, and it's nice to have a QWERTY keyboard on it. The only thing I would have to say is that the performance on the browser on this device makes it such that it's really a lot easier to grab a mobile device or even grab a laptop or a Chromebook or whatever devices you might have lying around to look up your information that way. I've always found that it's nice to have a browser on a Google TV device and that's one of the reasons I gave it a slight edge over the Roku at the time, but it's just in practice not very usable because it is just a little bit slower and the interface for interacting with the device, albeit you know, a nice QWERTY keyboard here is just a little bit slower than what you would experience on another device. Now, I'm doing a, inadvertently, I'm doing a zoom on there, which basically you have your touchpad here. If you pinch to zoom on it, you can zoom in as you can see there. So the functionality is there on this device. It's just that you can tell by the remote that there's not a lot of focus. And that's what really holds Google TV back. And one of the reasons it's, it appears that Google is going back to the drawing board and going to allegedly debut an Android TV or a Nexus TV device sometime this year. And one would imagine it would have a little bit more focus to it 
it would have a better user interface. Now, I don't find this device at all difficult to use, but I can see where it would confuse the general consumer. And uh, one of the things I don't like about this remote is this touch area here. As you saw, it was difficult for me to initiate the pointer at first. But also you have these click areas on here. You have the down, up, right, and left on here. So let me just go back to the home. I'm going to hit the home button on here. And right now we're on Netflix. can move over to Amazon Video. As you can see, the highlight is moving as I'm moving the clicking on the arrows here. Unfortunately, since the arrows are part of that touchpad, sometimes you'll initiate the cursor, a little pointer there, and it makes it difficult. It's not doing it right now, but I've experienced times where I'm trying to, you know, push one of the arrows and it's giving me the pointer. And it, it uh, within the Netflix app, I've, I've realized that. And it's a little bit, uh, could use a little bit of polish, let's say that. Now, let me say right out of the gate that this Google TV device is as good as any Google TV device that you can get out there. The box is small, the remote is compact, and it has a lot of functionality to it. You can't go wrong with this Netgear GTV100 if you want a Google TV device. Just be forewarned that, again, you have a remote that isn't always, as you saw when I started using it, um, when I tried to initiate the pointer, isn't always doing what you want it to do in all cases. But don't get me wrong, it works most of the time. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of the times when I watch TV, especially in my bedroom, I have the lights off. So the remote, albeit, you know, you know where things are generally, you know what to, what to use, and generally I'll be using the, uh, you know, the touch sensitive area up here. I might use these buttons down here, which jump to different apps. And then I'll use this back button here. That's pretty much what I use. Sometimes I'll have to shut the device off or hit the home button. But that's generally what I use on this. And I can pretty much find it. But being that there's so many buttons on the device, sometimes it's difficult to find what you want. Now, devices like a Roku, which have much more simplistic remotes, have an advantage in that in that aspect. Now, one thing that's interesting about this remote is where the batteries are. Let me see if I can get this going. There we go. You see them on either side there, and you just push these back to close it down. So there are a lot of good ideas in this remote. The only thing I have to say is that Google needs to simplify or streamline the Google TV a little bit more. Now, one of the benefits of having one of these streaming media boxes is that you can use an app on your Android or iOS device, in case you don't want to use this remote. And those devices are always backlit, so you don't have to worry about if you're in a dark room or not. Now I have my Apple iPod Touch here. I'm going to launch the Google TV app here, and let me show you what that looks like. You see you have all of your buttons there, and then if you want the touch sensitive area, you touch that, and it changes the top, and it should, as you can see there, move the arrow on the screen. I find that if you have a smartphone, a tablet, a companion device for the Google TV, it works out really nice to use the Google TV app, as opposed to the remote. As far as the remote goes, it needs to be streamlined a bit. I think I just launched something inadvertently by just touching this area here, sling player. Um, but uh, the remote, a little bit clunky for the general consumer. If you have the option of using an Android or an iOS device, definitely an upgrade to the regular remote. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of apps available. And let's see if we can uh, go over to HBO Go. Unfortunately, HBO Go is no longer supported on Google TV devices. It is on Android devices, but not on Google TV devices, because Google TV runs Android 3.2. And although this device launched with HBO Go functionality, it is no longer available because it was basically a hack. It wasn't officially offered by HBO. So if you want your HBO Go, you're going to have to go with a Chromecast or a dedicated Android device attached to your TV. Or, of course, you could go with a Roku or an Apple TV, but I'm basically just talking about Google's offerings right now. So it's unfortunate we can go up to uh, HBO Go. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, 
when it launches and okay if you saw there it flashed on there very quickly HBO Go is not supported on this device so you can actually go to the HBO Go home page and let's see how far this will go here there we go so you can see the HBO Go page because it's pulled up through the web browser but when you go to click on something it will not play so that's unfortunate on this device now one of the things about Google TV is that it offers an HDMI pass-through and that's something that's available also on an Xbox One it enables the device to overlay your live TV with Google TV options so right now and I've never been able to do this because I don't have a cable box with a HDMI out but if you went up to live TV up here you could pull live TV through your Google TV device but it's an attempt to consolidate all of your media through one device so you're not gonna have to change inputs on your TV if you want to watch TV next up let's take a look at primetime so you have here options of things that you can watch and it pulls in from a lot of different sources and Google TV was one of the first if not the first to offer that now you can get that availability on Roku where you can just find out what you want to watch and then it will point you to where you can watch it so let's say we wanted to watch Breaking Bad click on it here it'll show you your options of watching Breaking Bad so let it do its thing here so it shows that you can actually buy the seasons or buy the episodes on the seasons and um, let's see let's go back to season four okay so you have a free option for season four and that's probably through Netflix yeah right there and then if you want to buy season five that'll probably be through Amazon let's see if that's correct okay you have a lot of options for that if you want to buy you can buy through Amazon you can buy through Google Play Vudu so it's a really nice option here because this is going to again allow you to say okay what do I want to watch and then it's going to pull it in from all different sources now over here on the menu on the side here you can see that um, you can actually do this with things that are on live TV too so you can look up a show and see where you can find it and if it's on live TV you can go to it from here and then you have shows and then movies here so you have some different filters here so now I'm in the movie filter you know if I want to watch one of these movies here let's see let's try this is the end here and I'll hit OK and then it'll give me the options of where I can find it so I can rent it from 399 and I can rent that from Vudu so let's back out of this now the interesting thing is is that up top here where it says Q, movie Q, where you can add in your favorites. Let's go to shows with the same thing there. Um, as you'll notice, it has a plus icon there, so you can actually add what you want there. And all you have to do is select that, and you can type in your search for your TV show there. So down here, you have an option for your keyboard or a microphone. Let's use the keyboard first. Let's see what a TV show is. Let's type in the and it's very responsive and there you go you can see Walking Dead 2010 to present and it'll show you where you can get a hold of it so let's try another show here and this time I'm going to try the microphone to see if that works okay it kicked me out of the app there so let's try it one more time okay for some reason that's not working unfortunately fortunately I have my HP 7 tablet here with the microphone there so let's see if that will work Game of Thrones alright that did not work but it works when I use the keyboard so for some reason I can't use the voice to text on there it would be nice if I could 
I don't know why it's not working, but unfortunately it's not. But at least you do have the keyboard functionality. And again, your device, your tablet or smartphone is backlit, so it can make typing a little bit easier. You have a YouTube option, which is what you would expect. It is a Google device and YouTube's a Google property. Um, let me just show you what the interface is. I don't think we're gonna dive too deep into this, but you can see what you get on this device. You have uh, your most popular, your YouTube trends, and uh, what else we have? We have gaming, music, live now, and I think that's it on the front page there. Then also you have some filters on the left here. You have videos, you can sign into your account, you can have favorite channels, subscriptions, things of that nature. So it is a nice option here for watching YouTube on your television set. Of course, like any Android device, you have your regular settings. Uh, you can do a Google search here, and you could do that in several ways. You could go to the search icon there, or you can hit the search button on your remote. And of course, that's on the regular remote as well. So if you wanted to go and do a Google search, you just click on that, and as you can see, it brings it up and it will search universally. So let's just look up Game of Thrones. So you could do a Google search, you could search what's on YouTube on it, or you could look in TV and movies, and TV and movies would allow you to rent it. Now all apps, let me click on that. So this will show you all of the apps that you have installed on your device. And of course, if you want, you can install more by going to the Play Store. Let's click on that. And it looks just like the Play Store that you're used to. Now, of course, you have your Google Play Music and Google Play Movies on here. Let me click on Google Play Movies and TV. I never generally use this because I don't buy TV shows or movies, and I don't generally rent things either, but if I do, I mostly go through Amazon. But this is an option for you if you, you know, want uh, to rent or purchase movies through Google Play. It's a good store. Now, Google Play Music is a nice option to have on here because if you have a nice stereo system in your house, chances are it's actually hooked up to your television set as well. So it's really nice to have this option because you're going to be able to play your music from the best speakers you have in the house. Now, over here you have, or I have in my case, I have some different apps pinned to the menu here. And if I want, as you can see, I can add one here. And these are the options that I have here that I can add to it. Play on, let's put play on on there. So play on is there. Now, if I wanted to change these up a little bit, I'll just hit my menu button here. As you can see, I can customize my home items there. So click on that. So I can go to play on where I just put that on there and I can replace it with something else. So very customizable here. Now Voodoo, Crackle, Vimeo, those are pretty much all your basic user interfaces on this device. I'm not gonna go into that too much. I do wanna go into Netflix really quick. This is not the newest Netflix interface, unfortunately. This is one of the older Netflix interfaces. Very usable, but I do like the brand new interface. So as you can see, everything is very usable here. Next up, let's take a look at Amazon. Now this is nice to have. You're gonna find when you buy a streaming media box that not every box has everything that you're looking for. As you can see, pretty responsive. Generally, I've, I've found that uh, Amazon on certain devices is not very responsive, but on this one, I've had no problems. Now, what I'd like to try now is something I've never tried on a Google TV device before. I'm actually gonna plug in a keyboard and mouse into the USB port. More specifically, I'm gonna plug in a wireless keyboard and mouse, which uses this little USB dongle for both of them. So as you can see on the side of the device here, you've got your USB port. Let's just plug this dongle in here. Here's my mouse here, and I'm just going to, there we go, look at that. Works perfectly. I can scroll over to, I don't know, let's scroll over to Google Chrome. Click on the mouse, 
And let's look up something here. I'm going to use this keyboard here. As you can see, I'm just going to type in works perfectly. No drivers, nothing. Plug and play works just fine. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a USB gamepad. If I did, I'd give it a try here, but from what I understand, keyboard and mice and gamepads work all the same way on Android. Now, unfortunately, there are no games to speak of on Google TV. If this Google TV device was opened up to full Android, that'd be a different story. But I'm not complaining. Being able to use a wireless keyboard and mouse on a Google TV is very cool. You do actually have some notifications. So if you go up to the top here, you can see that you have your notification area. And then next to that, up top here, you have the availability to add a widget. So let's do that right now. Let's see what kind of widgets we have here. Okay, I have four widgets here. I could download more on the Play Store. Now keep in mind, Google Play on this device is not necessarily Google Play on your other device. I mean, it is Google Play. It's the, it's the official Google Play Store. But this device is limited in functionality, so you're only going to be able to download certain apps on this device. But let's put the analog clock on here. So there we go. So if you do want to go to your widget screen, boom, there you go, you have your clock. So in closing, I think it's a very solid device with some flaws. If you can get this device for a very reasonable price, it's a very solid streamer. If you're looking for something that has a brighter future, I would wait for the Nexus TV. Or if you don't want or need a Google device, I would definitely go with the Roku. Because as far as these streaming boxes are concerned, Roku has proven, it has a track record of actually improving their device constantly. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up, favorite this video, or share this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.